Give us some laughs, y'all. Tickle our funny bones. So give it up for Austin Anderson, y'all. Make some noise. All right. Give it up for the assassins of assembly. That's probably backwards. This is awesome, man. Benson. This is my new favorite place. I almost didn't make it. I'm 39, I ran out of gas on the way here. It hasn't happened since I was 16. I like to push it, you know? I hate getting gas. I'm like, this car will do my bidding. I, I, will, I will force my will upon it. No, I died at 108th and L in rush hour, and I was the one at the red light. I just abandoned the bitch and ran to the gas station. Then there were some cops. I'm like, I'm getting gas, and I need you to take me to my car. And they're like, do you have weapons? We don't want to be shot. I'm like, I have a knife. And they took it, and uh, they got me gas. And I'm here. I'm just glad I didn't smoke a bunch of weed before that happened. Because I wouldn't be here right now. If my car died and I was high, I'd be like hiding and shit behind a bush, waiting to see who's going to come up on the car, you know? I don't even like today's weed. It's too strong. All right? I'm, dude, I miss 1999 weed. That's my weed. Yeah, man. The stuff with the sticks and the seeds, the stuff that Snoop Dogg hates, that's what I love. Because back then, you could smoke a blunt with your buddies and all smoke it and just be kind of mellowed out, giggly, watch a movie. You do that with today's weed? One of those people is taking their shirt off, screaming, I'm having a heart attack, and that person is me. Because it's, <laughs> because it's happened. And I took my shirt off because I'm like, the only way I will live is if my heart can beat without restriction, you know? So I took it off. I'm like, beat, heart, beat. I'm just waiting for weed to become legal because once it's legal nationwide, that's when I'm going to open my businesses called Weed Fit. Or it's like CrossFit, but for weed. <laughs> Where we build up people's tolerance. They, they come... Come into my warehouse, you know, we start them off with a one-hitter, get them a pipe, and we'll roll some joints, blunts, do some weird shit like hot box under a blanket. <laughs> Cut the bottom off a two-liter, do some gravity bong rips out of a bathtub. I love it when people say it's medicinal. They're like, it's medicinal, man, it's my medicine. I'm like, you smoke your medicine out of a bathtub. You degenerate. I can't even believe weed's getting so strong now. You can smoke it with a blowtorch. They got dabs. I've never done them. It's too hardcore for me. I'm like, I don't even think you smoke meth with a blowtorch. But now we're, we're doing that with weed. You do? Are you from Council Bluffs? I was going to ask if anybody... <laughs> It's too easy, guys, I know. It's just too... Come on, you put... You have to be on meth. You put fucking Edward Scissor hands at the overpass. You realize a committee had to vote on that? They came in and they said, Listen, man, I got it. Edward Scissor hands, metal fingers, overpass. And the committee was like, Hell yes! Stamp of approval. They're like, How much will it cost? They're like, Who cares? Money's meaningless! They're like, where will it go to? Like a haunted house on a hill? They're like, no, a J.C. Penney's. <laughs> like in Council Bluffs, I don't even know. I get lost there. I got to put on my GPS. They got overpasses going every which way. It's madness. All right? It's like someone, like when I was a kid and I'd run out of pieces building my Hot Wheels track and I just put shit together. That's what they're doing over there. They're like, we got all these extra curves, man. What do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know. We'll just put them up. Let's just twirl that shit. Let's do that. Freaking July, January, I don't know, whatever this is. I know it's the new year. Has anyone failed at their resolutions? <laughs> like, yes, absolutely. I actually have kept mine. Three years ago, I quit drinking. So I did it. I'm three years... I know you guys are probably drinking. I'm making you feel bad about yourself. You know, you're like, fuck you. I got my paps. I had to, I mean, you know, I was just getting horribly out of shape. I ruptured my Achilles tendon because I played basketball for the first time. I had no idea that when white middle-aged men ball like LeBron, their Achilles tendons explode. I had no clue. Didn't know it was a thing. 
it ruptured. I was like, oh my God, who threw the ball at me? They're like, no one. And my muscle was in my calf. I'm like, oh my God. You know, I thought it was like a worm or something. It was horrible. People are like, did that hurt? And I'm like, I don't know. Have you ever heard of the God Achilles? Half man, half God, played by a chiseled Brad Pitt. No one could kill him. He would kill whole armies, face off against the biggest guy, kill him immediately. There wouldn't even be a war. One day, someone shot him with an arrow through his Achilles tendon, and he was like, fuck it, and he laid down and died. Yes, it hurts, it kills gods. I got a handicap sticker, though, so that was cool. I know what the future holds, endless possibilities of front row parking. I went to the College World Series. I don't even like baseball. I just wanted to park in the front, scoot around. It was sweet. So I ruptured that. I just got out of shape. I'm like, man, I got to cut out some booze. I've been a stand-up comic for a long time. We get free drinks. I'm like, I got I to gotta restore this liver. Plus, I went to jail once, and it wasn't even like a good jail sentence. Like, where you're real drunk, you're like, yeah, I deserve this. No, I did not. All right, I only had three beers. I was in North Dakota. It was on New Year's gig, actually. And uh, I didn't feel well, so I left, and I'm speeding through South Dakota, right on the border. It's like, it's an Iceland, okay? It looks like the Star Wars movies. There's nothing there. It's a tundra. They set up a booby trap. The cops in the middle of nowhere. Assholes. So I'm speeding. I get pulled over. I'm like, I got this. I do all the tests. I pass him. He's like, all right, blow on this, which is like, yeah, man in authority. Made me very nervous. So I was like, <sighs> he's like, get it out of your throat. I'm like, I don't know. No one's asked me to blow on things before. So I blew on it, and he goes, it's 0 .08. And I go, yes, I did it. He goes, no, dude, it's 0 .08 and above. You're going to jail. I'm like, shit, this is insane. The jail was 45 minutes away. I'm just in the back. He opens the door when we get to the jail. I just hop out. He's like, usually people can't do that. I'm like, I'm sober, dude. I am a sober man. You were put in jail. Do you have any books? That's how sober I am. He's like, yeah. Brings me a stack of women's erotica literature. <laughs> Swear to God, that's all they had. I go, you don't have anything else. He goes, no. I go, not even a Bible. He's like, no. I go, this is where I'm supposed to meet Jesus, in jail. No Bible? I'm like, fine. I read one of the women erotica novels. And I found out that some women, you know, you guys are into some weird shit. I'll say that right now. <laughs> you just are. I had no idea women love dick veins so much. I had no clue. There was even one thing. It said his pulsating penis membrane. I didn't even know what that was. That was my first Google search when I got out of the can. It's the big vein on my dick. Had no clue. So I got home. I was in jail for 14 hours. I was horny. I was like, baby, let's go for it now, you know? She's like, all right. So I threw a rubber band around my dick. I'm like, look at the veins. Look at them. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, jail, change me, bitch. I know what you're into. <laughs> uh, don't tell my wife I called her a bitch ever. <laughs> ever. No, just kidding. She knows. It's actually our 17-year anniversary tomorrow. Thank you, man. We got married young. You know, they said it would never work. It's been hard work. It's hard to be married. We're inherently selfish human beings, you know? We want things our way. That's why couples fight. You're going to have fights. I hate when couples say they never fight, you know? They're like, we never had a fight. We never fight. Have you ever met these people? I'm like, yeah, you know who else never had a fight? OJ and his wife. So I hope you look forward to a gruesome murder. So if you bottle it up, someone's jumping out of a bush. I'm telling you, write that. Are you painting that? <laughs> By the way, that's a beautiful painting. I'm having so much fun tonight. This dude, this place is awesome, man. I love Benson. This is fantastic. Are they saying ironic? And Lannis Morris said, I was like, that's my seventh grade jam. I love 90s music. That's what I'm about. I can't even, I was watching a Mark Wahlberg movie just the other day. I can't, I can't do it. At some point, no matter how involved I am, I want him to break character at some point, just look at it, the camera, pull down his pants and go, come on, come on, feel it, feel it. <laughs> Good vibrations. <laughs> he used to pull down his pants and thrust in children's faces. And moms were like, let him do it, he's hot. <laughs> Have you seen those abs? Let the man thrust. Could you imagine if Meatloaf would have done that? 
God rest his soul if Meatloaf was like, I will do anything for love. Yeah. <laughs> Women would be like, but I won't do that. You know, put your meat away, loaf. That is disgusting. There are children here. You're going to jail. It is jail time. I've met a lot of famous people in my time. I have. I'm always let down. I'm not going to lie. I am, I'm, and I hate it when people act like they know famous people they've never met. It really bothers me. Like I was at the grocery store, I'm in line, and this woman in front of me, I hear her say, Leonardo DiCaprio's a nice guy. So I go, you know Leonardo DiCaprio? She goes, well, no, I just bet he's a nice guy. And I go, Leonardo DiCaprio is a freak. He's been famous since he was a child. He's never seen an ugly person in real life. I'm like, show me a picture of him with an ugly person. It does not exist. She goes, well, he's been in movies with ugly people. And I go, yeah. And if they're unfit for his eyes, he puts, they put the ugly person in later with a green screen with special effects. She's like, what? No, that can't be true. I'm like, listen, I got a friend. He's very famous. He told me. Before Leonardo goes to sleep at night, his manager checks under the bed for ugly people <laughs> and reassures him they're make-believe just like monsters. And she goes, no, no, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And when I meet him one day, I'm going to ask him. And I said, you will never meet him. <laughs> and she goes, why not? I said, I think we both know why. <laughs> hey, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll actually be at the Funny Bone tomorrow night opening up for Jeff Dye. So you want to come see another show? Come check it out. Have a good one. God bless. What was that?